So, you see. Ah. You see. Mm -hmm. You see, a double magazine. You see, this guy is even unmasked. Welcome back, guys. I trust you've been staying safe. Now, this true crime story is coming out of my own country, Ghana, specifically from a market town called Adabraka in the Greater Accra region, which is having the capital city of my country. And this case is just about 24 hours old. Now, as you can see in the ongoing CCTV footage, the whole thing seems like a scene from a movie. And viewer discretion is advised. And I would want to state categorically that this channel does not condone or support violence. But we have to report on it for educational purposes. If you are new here, kindly subscribe. If you have subscribed, click on the like button, share this video. Let's learn some few security tips to protect ourselves as we look at what transpired and I try to add my two cents as we take lessons from this. So, like I was saying, this video is just about 24 hours old. It is an ongoing crime scene which has occurred and the investigation is still ongoing. So, in the wee hours of the 2nd of November 2024, now you will see this red Toyota Corolla. This Corolla is alleged to have gone to a jewelry dealer. And apparently there was a transaction and allegedly money to the tune of roughly almost 8 million Ghana cities. That is estimated about almost $500,000 was carried in sacks and dumped into the trunk of this car and if you are watching the footage you will see them carrying the bags of cash or the alleged bags of cash into the trunk of this car after which point the driver in all black gets into the driver's seat and the other occupant also joins him in the car and they try to take off or they actually took off only to be accosted and blocked by a 4x4 and then the rest is just crazy because from that point you see armed gunmen step out of the 4x4 accost the red Corolla open fire on it and then spray some bullets into the red Corolla now if you are watching you see the Corolla then comes back and then veers off the road a bit and crashes into a motorcycle parked by the roadside after which point these robbers then proceed to basically ransack the trunk of the Corolla and take away all its contents include these loaded sacks which are alleged to contain the money that this person had allegedly gotten from the jeweler but this video begs a lot of questions and i'm going to try and put in my two cents for starters if this is truly what they are saying that it contains cash i'm wondering why in 2024 money is being carried around in sacks I think before I start my analysis, I should first of all express my empathy to the victims. Yeah, it's not that I don't have it or I'm unempathetic, just that in as much as they are victims, I think maybe with a little extra caution, this could have been avoided. And I'm going to detail out why and add other two cents of mine. So the first being that this is 2024. How come you are carrying money around in sacks? That is if it really was money. I believe that we are even heading to 2025 and we are in an era where electronic transactions have come to play and helped take away risks like this. But then, let's just say for argument's sake that per what this person 
needed this money for, he had to have it as a physical money, not an electronic cash. Granted, maybe that was the case. I still think it could have been done better. He could have contracted a cash specie movement company where the transaction would have been carried out with a bullion van with an armed security who, of course, would have been well equipped to withstand the attack of these robbers and match them two for two and boot for boot. That is my two cents, maybe at a little cost, but lives would have been saved, monies would have been saved. Nobody has passed on from this, but it's alleged that somebody was injured as a result of the shots that were fired by these gunmen. I hope that allegation is not true, but in case it is, I pray the person survives and heals faster. But I, I still don't understand certain things I'm seeing in the video. And these are questions that are also coming up. Like for starters, what was the driver of the Corolla waiting for? After they had loaded the, the, the alleged cash into the trunk of the vehicle and he had sat at the driver's side of the vehicle and the other occupants had also joined, you would notice that he didn't take off immediately. And some people are trying to read meaning into it. And I'm going to get into it because people are asking questions along the lines of, could it be there was an inside job? Could the driver be a suspect because he got into the car and at that time, he waited some time before he took off, which people believe was unnecessary and that he could have taken off immediately. Let's do an analysis on this. Do you agree? If yes, let me know in the comment section. If no, let me know. But for me, I'll be on the fence on this. I'm not going to judge the driver as being a suspect because looking at the video from the outside, as in from what the camera is capturing, you would obviously be asking the same question that, hey man, why are you not taking off? You've sat in the car. What are you waiting for? Just move. Especially knowing that you are carrying sacks of alleged cash. And I think it's a valid analysis to make. But the flip side is there are other possibilities we can't determine watching the footage from the camera because we don't see what is going on in the car after he got into the car with the other occupant. That is, it's possible when he got into the car, they could have had a phone call. Maybe they were talking about something before they set off. There are a thousand and one things that could have prevented him from moving the car immediately or that could have accounted for him not moving the car immediately they got into it because we don't get to see that. So I think it's fair you don't start to judge the driver. Maybe somebody can look at him as a suspect and he could be cleared based on investigations along that line. But for now, I wouldn't say he's a suspect. I would just sit on the fence and allow the police to do their job. Then the other question is, how come these guys are able to have so much confidence and courage and effrontery, if I dare say, that they decide that they are going to commit this daring robbery activity in broad daylight in the presence of several other pedestrians and onlookers? I think that is a spit into the face of the laws of the land a spit into the face of public security, a complete disregard for the safety of human life. Look at how they fired sporadically onto the cruller. I think they hit the door and the, the, the driver front tie. And it's amazing no lives were lost because it didn't seem like they cared for any other thing aside what they were coming to pick from the car. And you see them eventually getting access to the trunk of the vehicle and carrying the sacks away. And one thing that I find very, very questionable is the fact that you will see in the video, one of them actually sprays or splashes money in the air as if <laughs> it's, it's like a movie. I don't get it. So what was that supposed to do? that 
the onlookers would rush and clamor around the money so they can't be pursued? Come on. I don't know, but the Ghana police has vowed to apprehend these guys. And already there are pictures circulating of their car or the alleged car they used for the robbery being apparently tracked via the installed CCTV cameras all over the capital to the point pictures circulating seem to suggest that the car they allegedly used for this incident was eventually tracked to somewhere in a town in the capital called Ashaiman and that investigations are ongoing. Now, this this is something else and it seems like a scene out of a movie but unfortunately, it is real. And I'm hoping that these guys will be found and dealt with swiftly because this is an affront to the laws of the land. This is a daring and brazen act against what the Ghana police and the other security installations of this country stand for, especially around a time where we are barely a month away from the country's general and presidential elections. We need some security and calm. And these guys have just tampered with that. And I'm expecting the security apparatus, as always, to get on board and just rectify this wrong. I don't know if this money was insured. I don't know anything about all that. Investigations are ongoing, so I, these things haven't come out yet. But I hope they were insured. And it still leaves one question. Was this an inside job? Because, come to think of it, someone would say, how were the guys able to know that around this particular time, at this particular shop, this particular customer would be there for such a particular transaction which would lead to these particular sacks, alleged sacks of cash which they could take away with their weapons. I am suspecting there was an inside job. Even if not an inside job per se, they had information beyond what other people would know such that they were well informed as to the time, the place and the victim and the transaction and to the fact that they know the the booty is in the boot or the trunk of the car that says a lot and i know the police will uncover certain things very soon because in as much as they were being brazen and sporadic it seems as though there wasn't much technicality to what they were doing seems like there wasn't much precision and flawlessness to what they were doing. Rounds were retrieved. Ballistics would definitely be conducted and tested. CCTV cameras are also picking out the vehicle. But then the question is, is the vehicle even DS or belongs to any of them? Or was it apparently probably stolen? I don't think it will belong to any of them. But I know the Ghana police are very deep. I know they are very, very competent when it comes to solving cases. And I know that they are going to crack this. I don't think it will go beyond the month, honestly. I have a feeling that within the next few weeks, they will bust these guys. And they will make an example of them and bring them to the full rigors of the law. I'm following the case, as and when there are updates, I'll bring them to you. But please, let's be security conscious. I'm not judging anybody, but all I'm saying is let's be security conscious as much as you can. Rather resort to using electronic transactions. That way, you don't become a target for somebody because you don't even have the physical cash on you. And one other thing that I'll commend the onlookers and others for during the attack was nobody tried to be a hero. It's very important. If you are ever in such a situation, please surrender everything they are asking for, which you have. Comply. Don't try to be a hero. This is not a movie. This is your life. 
Subscribe if you are yet to do so. Turn on post notifications. I'll bring you updates as and when they are due. And I'll catch you on the next one. Stay safe out there.